and welcome back to the Knits for the Soul podcast. My name is Claudia and I'm recording this episode for you from central Germany, a little town called Merseburg, where I live with my son and our dog Ivo. He's also very close by, next to me on the couch, so if you hear noises, <laughs> he's probably annoyed that I'm talking to no one. <laughs> yeah, um... Again, it's been a while, I, well, in my opinion, I knit a lot, but probably not in the knitting podcast or world related lot. <laughs> um, and I have a couple of uh, finished objects to show you. I have two whips I would like to show you and some yarns and some books and what I crazily want to knit next though I have a lot of whips. Well thank you for stopping by again um, you're all very welcome. Anybody who's new here thank you. Um, I'm really happy that uh, you decided to click on this video and um, if you like what you see um, and my um, traditional unpreparedness, then yeah, check out the other videos for everyone who's uh, a returning viewer. Thank you so much. You're making my day and I'm really, really happy, um, especially about uh, all the views I got for my yarn shop video. Um, for the Mercerie in Munich I recorded in December. Thanks, there were a lot of views. <laughs> um, I wanted to do another yarn shop video um, in the past two weeks, but every time I went there, it was closed. So I have to prepare that better and maybe make a date with the owner, let's see. Um, yeah, so this is probably something you like to see. Um, I also do like videos like that when, um, yeah, you guys out there introduce us to your local yarn shops. It's really nice. I loved Munich. Munich was amazing and it wasn't the last time we went there. So um, there are a couple more yarn stores there <laughs> that are worth a visit. So um, yeah. I hope it won't take that long, maybe during during spring now or early summer, let's see. Yeah, um, what else? It's 2023, oh my god. Um, I started a new job in January. Um, I left my company where I worked for five, five years and started in another one. It's um, kind of a startup. Um, they, they established themselves in 2016, 17. And yeah, it's, it's an amazing, an amazing company. They're growing crazy. <laughs> and yeah, so I started in January. I have a really cool team. My colleagues are lovely and very supportive and I like it. I like the transparency in that company. I like how open they all are, how, um, how, how to say that. Um, so the networking is amazing. So I'm hoping, um, for, yeah, for, for a couple years great working there <laughs> um yeah well something has to finance my yarn stash right <laughs> so if no one of us would need a day job we could knit so much but the yarn has to come from somewhere yeah um sorry my, my dog is staring at me like something is she talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, so for the new viewers, um, I kind of try to prepare. Being prepared is 95% uh, 
is this is the 95 percentage of success right um i do that at work <laughs> but it never works really well with this podcast so just blundering a lot um nevertheless um i i kind of tried to get a yarny setup a bookish setup as well <laughs> so that I'm between my two worlds. Um, I'm sorry if if this is kind of distracting because I'm um, in front of the window. Uh, yeah, and I've got a lot of stuff surrounding me I want to show you and I want to talk about. Um, yeah, so let's get right into it. Uh, the finished objects. So I... Uh, well, I put my whip on the sock blockers which is kind of not very helpful so let me just change that I have a lot of socks to show you if you follow me on Instagram you've seen a couple of them already um, but I'm going to show those to you here on the podcast as well so I don't uh, spend a lot of time with uh, exchanging the socks on the sock blockers. Um, I'm only showing one stretched on a sock blocker. Um, I'm working on my sock tube socks since 2021. Is it right? I think so, right? Um, and I decreased my sock yarn stash immensely with that tube immensely so there was almost nothing left of my sock yarn stash that has changed <laughs> but as a sock yarn is no real stash we don't count that right anyways um i am just one pair of socks away from knitting that tube entirely so here i have a pair of socks for you this is an opal yarn not a subscription yarn um, i bought that on its own i have no idea which color it is <laughs> oh let me just check that so hence the unpreparedness where is it? No, this is the stash. Yeah. Oh yeah, so I started my sock tube in 2021 in August. Um, I had about, yeah, about 4,000 meters of yarn knit up in a one by one rib on the sock, the antique sock knitting machine of my friend Stefan. Uh, his name on Instagram is Stege. <laughs> so if you just want to check him out, he's knitting incredible sweaters. Um, yeah. And let's see, where is that Opal I'm holding up here? This gain is from the Opal subscription in 2021. But I got it gifted. I got it gifted. It's from some lady from the Hallische Strickstammtisch. Um, I think. Yeah. So, and here is the other sock. Um, I used Lang Yarns Jawohl, the 50 gram skeins you get from Lang Yarns for, for calf and the toe. And the heels of both are, this is the remaining of the pink I had from the long yarns and this little piece and this complete heel is from another Opal subscription, but from 2022. I stole a bit of the pink from one of the skeins um, to finish the heels because I used up all the long yarns and pink. So this is the first pair I finished. This here, this here, 
this year, yes, on the 1st of January. I finished this on the 1st of January. So this counts as the first finished object for 2023. So um, I divided that whole opal skein into two pairs. So um, 420 meters, 100 grams of sock yarn um, result in a approximately 400 rows long tube um, on the sock knitting machine. It is, yeah, we used the 84 stitch repeat. Um, you could say that the tension um, would result in a gauge if you knit with the needles with a two millimeter needle, um, especially in a stockinette stitch. Um, and this is one by one. So as you can see here, it looks so tiny, right? But as it's a two by a, a one by one rib, it's stretching out. And the 84 stitches make a really, really nice sock. So um, yeah, I'm glad I showed this finally so I can wear it. Um, yeah, so I divided that tube of 400 rows, just 50-50, and did another short pair of socks, um, this one. So it looks a bit weird now on, on the sock blocker. So the contrasting parts is a hand dyed blue face Leicester fingering weight from Tabby Cat Fiber Arts. Uh, Melanie, she's a friend of mine and I've had this forever. I have a lot of those 50 gram skeins in, uh, in a range of colors um, and I used a bit here as a contrast for these socks. So this looks weird up here. So this is just a couple of rows of stockinette and then I bound off with an eye cord. Um, I did the, um, the contrasting parts all on a 2.5 millimeter needle. Um, this looks weird here, but when I wear it, it's, it's quite snug and it stands up and it looks like this. And it's really nice. I have no idea why I did this. I just wanted to try. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so this is the second pair of socks. Then, because I was on a roll, <laughs> I picked up the next uh, part of the tube. And this is a hand dyed merino fingering weight from Sandra Craftfulness. Uh, she's Dutch. I think she's not dyeing yarn anymore. Um, I got these yarns from her. Um, a lot of them ended up in my sock tube um, in my 2021 yarn swap. So I did a lot of swaps. So I have more swap yarn to show you what I'm finally knitting up. So here you see, so this is, is it hers or let me just see. Um, yeah, I think it was dyed by her. Uh, the colorway is koi, like the fish. And it's so gorgeous. Isn't this beautiful? I love it. So um, this is a whole 100 gram skein, again, 400. Uh, rows in a one by one rib. Here's the other one and I used a black uh, sock yarn for the contrast as you can see. Um, let me just think, did I use a reinforcement? Yeah, yeah. For the heels and the toe I used um, the black reinforcement yarn that comes with the Lange Yarn Seawall um, sock yarns. This is so nice. I can't wait to wear these. They are so amazing. Um, this is not a sock yarn. This is a merino fingering. I think it's a super wash, but it's not a sock yarn per se. But as the tricky parts have sock yarn 
and are reinforced, um, I think they will hold up quite nicely. Yeah, so these were three pairs of socks from my sock tube. And the last that is left of that tube is this one. Isn't that amazing? So just let me show you that a bit closer. I hope you can see the Stellina. This is also by um, Sandra of the Craftfulness podcast. This is a sock yarn with Stellina. And I so adore these colors. I mean, it's mustard, yellow and gray. It's so amazing. And yeah, I have not decided yet what I will do as a contrast. I have a very nice skein of a matching mustardy yellow Regia Premium. Is it a yuck? Or is it a silk? I think it's a yuck. Um, but I do have a lot of matching uh, grace in the Lang Yarns Jawohl that would fit here perfectly. So then, with this done, the first sock tube from 2021 will be knit up entirely. But <laughs> I have another sock tube because Stefan um, cranked up a lot of leftovers. And just let me get... Where do I have... I already finished one pair, <laughs> really doing the trick because these are leg warmers and they were from the second sock tube I got from Stefan. Here is what is left of it. So I dug in already, dug in it already. Um, so this is a Scuderia Pure Merino Fingering in the color Sundowner. He knit a sweater with this and I think it was the Red Fort and it's so gorgeous. And he knit up the remaining yarn of it and it was... 243 rows of stockinette. So he did the stockinette here. And how many stitches are there? Also 84. And for the contrasting colors, I used a mini skein I got from a friend. This is a Walk Collection Tough Sock Mini. And I think the color is number 14 exclusive. And this is. <laughs> what remains of the mini skein. Um, I did 15 rows of a two by two rip, just bound off um, in a stretchy bind off. That is the first um, finished object from the second tube. And then I started another pair of socks from that tube. And here is a bit um, where I just, I, I don't know what happened here, but um, I had kind of a full 100 gram skein as a tube from this, from this one, so very nice. And I made um, socks out of these and had a contrasting colors, also again in Lang Yarns Jawohl. Um, sock yarn in red and blue. So this is the red 793 and the blue is 033. And the foot was, um, so the foot between the toe and the heel, the, the afterthought heel was 70 rows. That's basically my go-to for a European 40-ish size. And the leg I did for these was 150 
rows and a 15 row 2x2 two two cuff. And I can only show you pictures here, so I posted them on Instagram already because I gifted them. I gifted them to a new colleague of mine and um, I'm so, so excited what he's going to say um, when, when he receives them. So they're uh, currently um, at the Munich office and but he's he's not in town so um yeah <laughs> he's he's uh also excited and can't wait he doesn't know he's getting socks <laughs> we talked about knitting and everything so he's definitely a knit worthy person um just made a socks right yeah and um this this is what the socks like so i, I put pictures here um i also or you or you can also Check them out on on my Instagram. It's also called Knits for the Soul. Like this channel. Yeah, so then where's the oh um and then this little part has another longish part. So I will probably use both of these for socks um and graph this somewhere. Let's see um, how I will do this um, for another pair. I haven't decided what kind of uh, contrasting colors I will use. Then here is another self, well, not really striping, it's a self pooling yarn. I don't think this is hand dyed. This is a commercial yarn. And here is a lot of these. These can be, I guess, three pairs of socks, at least, at least. Yeah, so there is still a lot to do. And it's really nice to use up leftovers or minis for that. But I kind of build a collection of those 50 gram skeins of Lang Yarns Yarrow Sock Yarn. I love them, especially because the color range is amazing. They have so many pretty colors. Um, <clears throat> so many different shades of grays and blues and greens, etc. So there is uh, something for everybody <laughs> in that yarn, um, in that yarn base. And um, they always come with a little uh, a little bobbin of reinforcement yarn. And the good thing is, um, so if you would knit a pair of socks with those skeins, one bobbin of reinforcement yarn would be enough for two heels. And then a tiny bit would be left over. Um, but in my case, I use them as the contrasting parts. That means I'm knitting a lot of heels <laughs> and the uh, the little bobbins aren't enough for that but you can buy them separately and they're not expensive I think I paid 1 euro 20 I think for one bobbin and I mean compared to the whole skein you get um, in the in the shop I buy them oh, they they always have happy hours so you 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 save about 10 percent when you when you purchase something during their happy hours um, but I think one skein of the long yarns your wool the 50 gram skein is about seven euros I think so right I'm, I'm not sure um, and compared to that a single bobbin of reinforcement thread with one euro twenty, I guess, seems kind of expensive. But as I use them with the scale, <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so, the first yarn acquisition I had, I cannot show you <laughs> properly this year, are additional bobbins of reinforcement yarn. Um, I needed more of the blue, I needed more of the red, and uh, just in cases 
I bought another gray because I had nothing of the um, light gray anymore and the yellow. And I said, yeah, you cannot have enough Mars study yellow yarns and the threads. Yeah, so um, this is my collection of reinforcement yarns. And where can I put that? Let me see. Yeah, um, in hindsight, uh, I thought, why didn't I purchase uh, one or two bobbins of um, the natural white with this order? Yeah, I forgot. Um, anyway, um, I, I've knit the first sock of the next project I'm about to show you without a reinforcement yarn, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, um, so that was it about the finished objects. I have two whips uh, to show you that... Um, so let's see which one is the right direction of the sub block or this one, I guess. Yeah. Um, I posted this on my Instagram as well. The idea... Oh, it's wrong. This is the wrong direction. Um, the idea for these socks is from... Hello Stella on Instagram. She posted a story, I think in autumn last year, um, with with socks she was uh, was knitting up, and I thought it was so so cool um, to knit up a lot of leftovers in it, and I was kind of excited uh, when she when she said that she's going to uh, call for testers. That never happened because her cat got lost. Do you say that? Yeah, well, he got lost. They found him again, but he was severely injured and sadly he died. So, um, yeah, that test it never happened. And, um, yeah, I just... Uh, took the inspiration from her story on Instagram to to start a sock on my own and uh, if you are interested and you need a pattern and you can't wait until uh, she might release hers um, there is there is another one that is quite similar it's with thicker yarn but you could just um, yeah use the directions but for what you do with your fingering yarn when you knit socks so i i don't you <laughs> i don't need patterns for that because i have a go to sock recipe i always knit so i know that my socks fit um and i just i just check patterns for a certain stitch pattern maybe um but not for the construction itself. Anyway, um, if you if you need a pattern, there is the Unique Socks by Irina Shmarova. Yeah, Shmarova. Um, that is quite similar to the idea of these. So these are a lot of let leftovers. You see my uh, heels heel, toe, and uh, cuff, but it's just a basic, natural, wide sock yarn. I think this is a Lang Yarns as well, um, or a Regia, I'm not sure, uh, I don't remember. So this is the first top-down sock I have knitted in maybe 10 years. I'm a, um, I'm a bottom-up sock knitter. <laughs> um, this is the first top-down sock I have knitted in ages. So it was a lot of fun. The heel you see is the heel from Hermione's everyday socks. But I have no idea what I did. Look at this heel. It's nice, isn't it? 
it's really nice so i knit this sock sometime in november and then i did a lot of other things <laughs> and i finally i cast on where's my where's my yarn here i cast on the second sock and i've knit the heel and <clears throat> do you notice something <laughs> yeah so this is the heel the the modified eye of portrait heel from hermione's everyday socks this is the heel where i messed up and didn't notice and thought hey that is pretty <laughs> but it's two different heels I'm not going to rip this apart and knit the wrong heel. I'm just keeping it that way because it's a sock. <laughs> it's a leftover, leftover scrappy yarn sock. And I don't care. So I was wondering when I when I uh, put this on the sock blocker uh, to show you that this is looking different. And then I use the sock as a reference for how many for how many um, rows of uh, a scrappy yarn um, I had for each segment. And I thought, that looks weird. <laughs> yeah, because it's a different stitch anyway. So yeah, the yarns in here are also lovely. So I have, this is a mini, I think this is a Malabrigo sock mini I got in a, oh, please try our yarn box from Malabrigo like 10 years ago. Um, this is a hand spun merino yarn um, I got from my friend Margaret. This is a Regia sock yarn. This is a hand dyed, um, um, a Moncha Moonshaft Pegasus in the color Shea. This is a swap sock yarn thingy. I don't know what it is. Then here's again the Regia, the Moonshaft. Then another mini and again the Malabrigo and again the Regia. Um, yeah. I really like this. And this is just a 64 stitch sock, but as it is in stockinette, it fits really nicely so I usually I usually when I when I knit socks um, completely by hand and not a sock tube um, I usually knit a 72 stitch sock but either my gauge changed tremendously or my feet got smaller <laughs> I don't know Anyway, uh, 64 stitches fit now. That's nice. Saves a lot of yarn. Um, it's knitting up way faster. So let's see. Um, there are a couple of socks I want to knit uh, that are in my Ravelry queue. So this is my first whip I wanted to show you. So um, this won't take very long here um, because you just want to finish up one segment and then another and then another and um, yeah the transition from one segment to the next is just one row of purling nothing special and yeah that's that project so let me just drink a bit of coffee and oh it's 2 p.m. I will go to our weekly stitch and bitch today. It's Sunday, the 19th. Happy birthday, Yvonne. Yvonne, you are in England. And um, um, if, you, if you follow my channel, there are a few videos with her about books we've read together. So it's her birthday to, today. So happy birthday. <laughs> and yeah. Um, 
I don't know if I have time to, to talk about the books as well. Maybe I have to record this later. The light is great today. So the next project, the next whip, um, I cast this on, I think two weeks ago, because my friend Ulrike um, finished her night shift shawl and it is so, so gorgeous. I wanted to knit the shifty sweater forever. I have, let me just grab that from my trusty stash cabinet. I have the pattern and I have the yarns set aside for my shifty sweater forever. When my friend Ulrike decided she wanted to use up some sock yarns and leftovers, she knitted a night shift shawl. And the finished one is so, so beautiful. I thought I should do that too, just because I liked. I have no real knitting plans. No make nine for 2023. Um, I'm just going to knit whatever I like and whatever I'm in the mood for. So I started the night shift. I'm not very far because I wanted to uh, finish the socks because it's finished February, right? So I'm not very constant in my not having plans <laughs> um yeah or in in not yeah pressuring myself <laughs> okay so this is what i've knit so far i'm knitting this on a five millimeter needle and i don't know if this is popping out on camera um the main color for this is something I got in my yarn swap two years ago. It's a Wensleydale long wool in Aran weight, it says. So it's 100 grams with 160 meters or 174 yards. So this is... This is the main color, if you want to call it that. But I haven't dug in into the um, single skeins because I got in the swap, I got a lot of these little bobbins. And <laughs> everything you see here is made up of these little things and um, yarns, left uh, little minis or leftovers. Um, I put in between. So this is an Aran weight, so um, I'm knitting this up pretty... Do you see? You can see through it pretty loosely. Um, I have a Opal 6 ply sock yarn here as a contrast. I had some fingering weight Baram U Mini. I combined with a Monchaf hand dyed mohair. It's Virgo. Um, I used this in my Stephen West um, Mystery Knit Along 2021. And then I have a couple of other minis. So these are going in there. And from the Wensley Day Long Wool, I also have this one as a solid color. So it matches this mild one. And I have the mild one also in, whoo, in a darker blue. So I'm, I'm, I have a lot of these skeins. So I'm looking forward where and how to put this. I'm going to play around a lot with the colors and will also change the main color, I guess. And then I think I'm going to incorporate 
some of the hand spun yarns I got from my friends Margaret and Denise. So in 2015, I went to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival with Margaret and I bought a couple of um, spinning fibers merino from my gosh, I put it down here. And I never got around to spinning them. And Margaret has, uh, yeah, did spinning classes and she's spinning with a hand spindle, but also on the, on the wheel. And I gave her those um, fibers and she spun them, up, spun them up for me. Well, I, I, I didn't expect to get them back actually, <laughs> um, but she, she gifted them as yarns back so in one of my other episodes I showed them so there are a couple more in here and I think this this is too thick but these have the right weight that they would fit with the Aaron and the gray and also the mustard and the red currant color they will kind of merge with the other ones i have in here so i'm really looking forward to uh, knit those up in the shawl to have this um, wonderful memory of the uh, of the edinburgh yarn festival visit with my friend and well that's my friend spun those yarns for me. Um, there are several from, from another friend, from Denise, in there as well. Um, I would just have to see um, if uh, some are um, yeah, a fitting weight so that, that I can knit them in there as well. Okay. So these are my two whips. Um, there are several other whips uh, I currently have on my needles, but as for my slice sweater cardigan thing um, I showed you in a previous episode, I haven't knit on this because I wanted to have more colorful things um, in the grayish darkish uh, time we had uh, in winter now and the, the slice sweater is a black alpaca and a dark brown um, wool, so um, I wasn't really in the mood to knit it. Um, but I will pick it pick it up again as soon as I finish that uh, scrappy sock pair. So I get a bit on with this. Yeah. Um, and before. Ugh, I'm going to head to my stitching bitch. Uh, I will ask the girls if I can um, do a bit, yeah, record a bit footage <laughs> from us knitting and I will put it somewhere. Um, I wanted to show you some books. Um, let's start with the, with the knitting related books. So um, when we moved to this little town here, um, we were really sad to leave behind that amazing public library we had in our, the previous place we lived. But the one here is equally amazing. So before Christmas, when we, uh, when my son went there to get more books for um, his school holidays, I went with him and walked around a bit and they had a huge shelf with all kinds of DIY and craft books um, they got in recently. It blew my mind because not only did they have the translation of Alexa Lutman's Nordic Knitting book. Look at this! Ah! It's so amazing! So... <laughs> um, there, there is there is one sweater in there. I really, really want to knit. Let me just get that. Where is it? Yeah. Is there a front one? Yeah. It's, well, it's translated. I'm not sure if the original version is also called, called Cartography. I don't know. It's this one. 
this is so beautiful. I really want to knit this. And it's just, it's just I can need to, to, um, yeah, go through this book and look at all the pretty pictures. And I mean, <laughs> the husbands are so pretty in their knitted sweaters. So more eye candy. <laughs> yeah. So then, um, I think this is. I'm not sure this is a translation of something because the author seems to be an Anna Bauer. It's statement knitting. Um, and this is an awesome book. The colors in there, they're just blowing your mind. So like this one or I haven't checked, or I, I'm not sure I even will knit one of these. It's, it's just to look through that book and just uh, be happy about all those motifs and the colorful uh, garments and accessories. It's such an amazing book. So let me just check. So if this is a translation, Oh, it's a Swedish original, so I'm, I don't know. It's called Hansestrik, a love story, Stika Mönster på dit set. <laughs> Sorry if I butchered that. So it's from 2020 and it's Swedish. So Anna Bauer is apparently from Sweden. And yeah, yeah. So this is a Swedish, actually a Swedish book. So it, it, it says something about Hönsestrik and yeah, this is so cool. And it's amazing actually that it has been translated into German and that my little town library had this. Amazing. And then, I almost I almost fell over. <laughs> they had a translation of the Viking Strick by Lasse Mattberg in my library. Ah! Oh my god. I follow this guy. <laughs> I've been following this guy on Instagram. I don't know for 10 years. <laughs> um he's I, he's a soldier and he's also a model and I mean he is I guess the epitome of the most handsome men ever because he's tall <laughs> he's got water bright shoulders he's got a beard and he's long and he has long, <laughs> long hair so this is this is my, my my dream man that's it that's it like that <laughs> I mean if you, if you have a guy with a beard and a man bun and then in knitwear and he is knitting himself so this is it's basically a dream come true right yeah so um if i got this right when they when this was published um i think he did this in cooperation with um the princess um with a, with a Nor Norwegian princess, um, Merta Louise. She's also a knitter and designer. And I think I saw an interview with both of them um, on a Norwegian TV show. Or I think his book was promoted and hers, something like that. And they met up. Um, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> I can't believe it. Um, I was I was in the bookshop and uh, when this was released, and I thought, oh, will I buy this? Will I buy this? It's not expensive. It's about twenty five euros, and it's just it's it's just an eye candy book piece, and and so amazing, yeah. Um, and when they have this in my library, so oh my god. I'm treating myself to this over Christmas. Um, yeah, I'm, I have re renewed the, the the subscription for it <laughs> twice. <laughs> yeah. 
dress is so cute. So cute. Yeah. Um, I also love this sweater. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. Um, I I have the yarn um, for that for that sweater for my son, um, and I really have to knit that one. But I really hope I can persuade him to one or two of the sweaters in that book. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Mm. I really need to go. Ooh, oh my gosh. I have a table full of yarn here. I haven't showed you yet. Um, in this bag as well. Um, I think I will do a stash episode separately and then just tackle this mountain of yarn in that one. Thank you for stopping by if you're still here. Well, thanks. I know I'm rambling a lot. Um, I hope I hope it was bearable and that you're well and that you're okay, that you have a lot of time for knitting, that you're healthy, that everything is okay, that there are no horrible natural catastrophes happening around you. And yeah, thank you for watching and um, see you next time, hopefully very soon. Bye. But I wanted to show you non-related knitting, uh, non-knitting non, non related reading. Um, I've, I have a book recommendation for you. Um, this book has been translated from French, I think, into 38 languages. It's by Olivier Bourdeau. It's Waiting for Bojangles, the Nina Simone um, song, you know, maybe you know that. So this is such a beautiful book. Um, it's about uh, Georges and his wife and um, their son. And the mental illness the wife has. Um, the book is written in the point of view of George, the husband, and the son. It is done so wonderfully, so beautifully. Um, most of the book, you're just laughing. Um, and, and then you're crying, and then you're laughing again. And it's, it's just such an amazing book. So um, I've read this in German. Um, the, the author is French. It was his first book, I think. Um, but he got a lot of prizes for it. And um, it has been translated into kind of every language. So if you find Waiting for Bojangles or whatever it is called in your language, give this a try. It is not a long book. It's about 160 pages. So you will read this in 
two sittings, two evenings, whatever, or in just one sitting. It's so beautiful and I really, really loved it. Um, the way they are dealing with, with her um, mental situation and what this means for the husband, what this means for the son. Um, and well, in the end for her. Um, yeah, so this is this is such a good book. So, and then a totally different genre. Um, and it's quite old already. I think the first book came out in 2009, I think. It's by Gail Carriger and it's the Alexia Tarabotti series or um, the, how do they call it? <sighs> The Parasol verse, I think. So it is, or the Soulless series, whatever you call. So I have ooh, all of the five books now. I'm in the third one, and this is so good. It's so good. It's kind of Austin-esque, <laughs> but also not so gail carriger has a style of her own but it's so so good so this is fantasy um there are vampires and werewolves and all kinds of supernatural things um let me just read for the first the first uh, book is soulless okay alexia tarabotti is laboring under a great many social tribulations first she has no soul <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, the name is, um, yeah, <laughs> triggering the other one, <laughs> sorry. Um, second, she's a spinster whose father is both Italian and dead. Third, she was rudely attacked by a vampire breaking all standards of social etiquette. Where to go from there? From bad to worse, apparently. For Alexia, no, she's not reacting, okay, <laughs> accidentally kills the vampire, and then the appalling Lord Macken, loud, messy, gorgeous, and werewolf, is sent by Queen Victoria to investigate. So you hear it's um, in a, like a parallel universe of Victorian England. It's a lot of steampunky goodness, so it's really nice. Um, and she is, yeah, starting on an adventure with that werewolf lord. Well, you can imagine the rest. And then it goes on with Changeless. That was so much fun. <laughs> and then it's Blameless. I'm a bit, well, well, Changeless is kind of a, has kind of a cliffhanger and you think so, no, please sit down and talk about this. So let's see how this is going to play out. Um, then there is Heartless and last one timeless and there are kind of a gazillion spin-offs to this series and i'm totally hooked i have no idea how i could live without having these in my life before but now i have so it's really nice yeah i really need to go <laughs> i need to go to my stitch image um 